This intro is being shot with the lens in question, the Maker 50mm f0.95. Am my X-T4 wide open? So this could be a fairly interesting test. Anyway, now we've got that test out of the way, we're going to look at it up close. Yeah, there's a little caveat with this one, I'm afraid. Then we're going to throw up some random images and then it will be over to you after I've had my little waffle. You know how it goes, so let's just crack on. Warranty, gel, I think. That is basically it. And the lens itself. Let's have a look at this thing up close then. We've got that nice new Maker manual focusing ring. I do like that. This is plastic. Less said about that the better, but it is clearly space saving. There's no lens hood with it, but at least that saves a bit of space and keeps it protected. Now this is not clicked, running from 0.95 to 16. That's a bit of a negative, I'm afraid. The scales seem decent and it does stop what is apparently infinity. We'll see how that fares in use and if need be, we'll have a word about it. 62 mil filter thread. Let's pop that back on there, have a look at the mount on the back. We've got the typical maker cap on the rear. Everything looks decent there. Let's see how we can, with the maker caps, you do have to line them up just right, but they're solid once they're on. This is weighing 420 grams. There are 13 diaphragm blades, seven elements in five groups. Minimum focusing distance 45 centimeters and the maximum magnification ratio of 1.3 to 3. You can see the lens does move in and out as you move through the focus range. Now we've got a 75 mil full frame equivalent with an angle of view of 32 degrees. Now all this <laughs> clearly is very familiar. And having looked at it up close, I'm pretty convinced this is a rebranding job. It's exactly the same as the 7 Artisans 50mm f0.5, f0.5, albeit with, I think, better focusing and aperture rings. We've got the Maker branding, of course, different caps. Yeah, it's a rebranding job. So image quality. We're going to look at that next. I think it's going to be the same, the same thing. I mean, there's the joke online that maybe they change the coatings. Let's see how we get on with it. Let's treat it as a fresh lens to some degree. But yeah, we might be dealing with that famous rebranding trick, which is, is standard practice. If you look around or looked around some years back, a lot of cars were basically rebrands. There's a lot of Fords out there that have been rebranded as other cars, Mazdas and so on. Anyway, we're waffling. Let's see how this little rebrand gets on. Maybe it's going to be the same as the Seven Artisan. Anyway, let's crack on. <laughs> For the umpteenth time, D-clicked is still not a benefit for us Fujifilm shooters as far as I can see, but I'm open to suggestions, of course. But you know, otherwise, the aperture ring, it's very easy to work with. I really like the manual focus ring and the overall build, handling and physical performance is a big pro for this lens. Funnily enough, at the photography show, I got some comments about how cool the lens looked, wide open. So, you know, there you go. Good job, maker.
Before we get into the image quality, let's kick off with a clip where we change the aperture between frames. Nothing else will change. See how you feel about the differences in image quality throughout the range. When it comes to image quality of, well, a lens like this, you'll hear the words vintage, character, creative, and all that jazz. And yes, this is way off the pixel peeper flavor of lens. Wide open is where the fun is. Yes, fun is another word when it comes to this kind of lens. And at f0.95, once you've managed to hit the focus, you can get sharp centers, character filled bucket, and imperfections that can be used to get creative. I forgot to say vintage, didn't I? Now, some of you might want to use this to shoot some video clips and two of you might want to know about the focus breathing. So just for you, here's a quick test clip. Contrast is pretty bad compared to a clean high-end lens, of course, but again, that could become part of the fun. Colors aren't so bad. Of course, the Fujifilm film simulations really help. I'm still using ProNeg High, Astia, and Acros Red at the moment, and absolutely loving those. Now, a big negative, maybe, is when it comes to chromatic aberration. Wide open, it's very prevalent. Purple fringing can be an issue, and you'd need to stop down past f5.6 to clean it up if it's getting in your way. When I shot a few people with this lens at the photography show, they were very surprised by the bucket. Of course, that was based on the screen preview. But what do you think now? Lemons and lemonade came to mind when reviewing the results of the focus breathing test, for example. So yeah, flaring is definitely something to consider. And I think you'll need to put a hood on this if you like to shoot in the sun a lot. So how do you feel about the image quality? Well, I really didn't like the intro quality, but some of the images actually surprised me. Going back to Bucket, it's a very personal point of view, but I think this lens has merits in certain situations, maybe with more solid colors than with foliage and definitely not with the LED panels that I found knocking about the photography show when I was testing this out.
I asked Maker if this is just a rebrand of the Seven Artisans 50mm 0.95, and they said yes, basically the same. So there you go. And based on that, I was going to limit the test shots and just get on with putting my thoughts together. And yeah, but you know, I'll be honest, I kind of enjoyed shooting with this lens. It has been over a year since we looked at the Seven Artisans lens, and I don't have that here now, but I prefer the rings on this one. And let's just say the IQ is identical, so what's the crack? At the time of recording this piece, Maker are selling their lens for 229.31 delivered, whereas the Seven Artisan model is sold on their site for 215 delivered. The prices fluctuate, I guess, with the exchange rate. You decide which lens feels best in your hands if you get your hands on it first. That is, <laughs> anyway, let us know in the comments below how you feel about this lens once you've had a little go with it. And yeah, I'll see you very, very soon.